Now, I know we're in church, so people don't like to be for real in church. Church is a place where a lot of fakeness go on. But if you were for real, you would say there has been some times in, in my life that, that I didn't think the right thing. I didn't, I didn't feel good, didn't feel saved, didn't act saved, <laughs> backslid and wasn't saved. Y'all don't want to talk. There have been some rough times in my life. But if you would learn how to think, matter of fact, the psalmist wrote, uh, the songwriter wrote a song and it said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. See, see, this is a powerful thing. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all in campus, all that he has done for me, for some reason, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. You didn't catch that because if you'd have caught that, it would have had a different effect. So I'm going to say it again for those of you that are tapped in to the supernatural to understand that the psalmist was given a testimony. He was saying, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah, praise God. You about to catch what I'm talking about. He hadn't even got into all. He said, when I begin to meditate, when I begin to think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul starts crying out, hallelujah. In other words, I start praising God. I start lifting him up. I start glorifying his name. Why do I do that? I do that because I just thought about something he did last week. I just thought about how he brought me over. Oh. Oh, help me, yeah. He said, when I think oh, the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. So, so watch this, watch this. If we do a spiritual exercise, that means everything quiet for just a second. Everything quiet for just a second. He said, when I I want you to meditate for about 30 seconds. He's, he, he said, I was able to get happy. Didn't nobody have to play no music? <laughs> Didn't nobody have to, had to be no cheerleader in front of me? He, he just said, when I sat down and, and, and looked back over all God has done for me, I just... Stuff just started happening in his head when he just sat down. Mm. Oh, my, my, ooh, you, you know, stuff just started happening when he start. He said, when I think of the goodness, when I think of how many times I put on brakes because I was messing with my phone and almost ran into somebody and I was able to stop. Now, I know that ain't y'all, but he said, when I think back on last week when I could have been in an accident, he said, he just started smiling. When I think how robbers could have broke in my house. Y'all ain't talking. I, I didn't need nothing but me and my thoughts. And I just started to get happy. And I just started praising God for saving me. I, I wish I had some folk glad. I'm, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm saved through the blood of Jesus. And I have purposed in my heart that I am going to think like God. Oh, I'm going to, y'all sit down. I'm going to start thinking like God. We'll say that again. I'm going to start thinking like God. Why am I going to start thinking like God? Bring me down just a little bit here. Why am I going to start thinking like God? Because that's what he told me to do. That's what he expected me to do. And that's what he created me to do. Was to think like him. Let's get in the word. Let's get in the word. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 26 through 28. Here begins the reading of the word of the Lord. It says... 
And God said, God speaking, let us make man how? In our image. And how? After. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man, how? In his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over every living thing that moves upon earth the face of the earth. Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is already blessed and anointed and it shall prosper those things you sent it out to do today in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Tell somebody I'm gonna think like God. We're talking about Omega Thinking, talking about Omega Thinking from the series Who Moved My Cheese, four characters, him and Ha, Sniff and Scurry. They had to make a decision. They had to move from one place to the other because the resources that they had had run out. Everybody moved but him. Him obviously stayed there until he was basically dead obviously, because there is no uh, writing that he ever moved from where he was. So in order to move, you got to start thinking different. You got to start thinking different. Tell somebody to think different. See, because when you start thinking different, you start doing different. There was a, there was a story of a, a, a young man, he, he had just bought a brand new gadget, real nice gadget, and he was out in the yard trying to put it together. And there was an older gentleman next door that was cutting his grass and so forth, and he was looking at him, and the young, young man had all of the papers out, and he, he read the whole manual, something that I would have never thought about doing. He, he read the whole manual, and then he started looking at all the pictures, setting all the parts out to make sure they look just like these, and he started putting it together. And, and once he got what he thought was all the way together to the last screw, he tried to make it work, and it would not work at all, wouldn't crank up wouldn't do anything. He went back, scratched his head, disassembled it, and, and made sure he had all the parts and put them back together. He said, yeah, this got to be right. And, and so he kept doing this about two or three times and eventually got frustrated. And, and the man on the uh, lawnmower next door, the older gentleman, could see him just getting frustrated. And he would push it over and kick it over. It started kicking it. He had lost his cool. And the older gentleman walked over and said, uh, son, could I help you? He said, uh, yeah, th th this dumb thing, they didn't, must have didn't send me the parts. This thing won't work right. He said, well, uh, let me have your, your, your parts. And he took all the parts loose, and he started putting them together, and, and he finished putting them together. And boom, everything crunk up, boom, just, just running. And, 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 the, and the boy saying, well, you didn't even read the instructions. I've been reading the instructions. He said, well, I didn't read the instructions because I can't read. He's saying when you can't read, got to use your head. It's a head thing more so than a knowledge thing. Now you got to have knowledge. You should seek after knowledge. But you got to use your head. And you got to think like God would think. But in order to think like God would think, you've got to have God on the inside doing the thinking. He will mess with your thinker if you let him on the inside. Hello, somebody. So, so here is the creation of man. God is creating Adam, and he formed him from the dust of the ground and, and gave him uh, dominion, gave him dominion over, the Bible says. But watch this in the 26th verse again. Let's read the 26th verse of Genesis one more time it says and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness he said I'm going to make man but I'm going to make man in my image and I will make him in my likeness now I'm fin you, you finna have to stretch you finna have to stretch this morning I'm going to make man in my image, 
and I'm going to make him in my likeness. If I Come here, Art. If I make him in my image, then my shaping, I'm forming him to be somewhat a reflection of me. He said, I'm building him in my image. This is an image. When I capture the image, you could turn the lights out and it'd just be a shadow, but it would still, his image would still be sort of like mine in the image. And in my likeness, God said, that means he going to act like me. He going to do stuff like me because he's not only in my image, my reflection, he is like me. He's in my likeness. So if I'm reflecting it, and then I'm also looking like it, then I must become what God said I'm supposed to be. So my, my thought pattern has to change. Thank you for looking like me and acting like me and stuff. Watch this. Art has the ability to do what I do because he has been made after my likeness and in my image. See, that's why he was able to pick up the keyboard. That wasn't him, that was me. That's me being perfected in him. That's why Jesus said, you got to understand, it's no longer you. But Paul said, no longer you, but it's the Christ that's living in you. It is the DNA that have been set in you before you were born. And then now you are what it was that caused you to be. So I'm, I'm not taking anything from art when I say he, it, it came from me. Jesus said, uh... He didn't count it robbery. <laughs> Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. I'll say that again. Let this mind that existed in Christ Jesus be in you. Now watch what Jesus said. And watch what the word said. He said, being it basically in the form of of a man didn't think it to be robbery to be equal with God. Now we know he didn't have no problem being equal with God because he was who he was. In the beginning was the word. Word was with God and the word was God. Although he existed as a man, he didn't count it robbery to be able to say thy sins be forgiven thee because he knew who he was. And he knew what his thought process was supposed to be. His thought process was not to be right now, but futuristic. That's why when he was hanging on the cross, he could look down and say, futuristically, it's finished. It's, it's, it's finished because I have accomplished what it takes to give them the power to do what they have to do. It was lost in the garden. God said, I made Adam in my image and after my likeness. So therefore, Adam walked around in the image and the likeness of God. He was the only thing on earth, him and Eve, that had dominion over everything. Because God charged them with the power. And when God gave them the power over, they were supposed to exist as God's children. So, they were what God was, just like art is what I am. You understand? See, because Adam got God's breath in him. The very breath of God. He breathed in him the breath. And man became a living soul. So, Adam is now the direct offspring of God. So Adam is supposed to reflect what God is. God put him on earth to run earth like he did in like he ran heaven. So how do you know that? Because that's what he's trying to get us back to right now. Matter of fact, the model prayer that Jesus taught 
uh, told us basically, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, we forgive those who uh, give us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us free, for thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory. Basically, in that prayer, he is saying that he prayed that the will of God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Adam was supposed to make sure that the will of God exists on earth just like it's going on in heaven. So now, how does that apply to me? Then if God's original intent was for us to think like him and act like him, then why are we so far from him? We have been separated from God by sin. And it is our sin and our iniquity now that keep us separated from God. Watch this. Adam watched as Satan tempts Eve. You have to understand things happen in a process of time. You don't backslide overnight. Eve didn't just eat overnight that fruit I, you can't get me to believe that because you don't backslide overnight it, it, it's a process you start out faithful then you start getting slack hello somebody then you show up then you don't show up then you find a fault with somebody or something in a church then you start creeping farther and farther back and before you know it you so far from what everybody, the word of God and, and, and the vision of the church to where nothing penetrates you because Satan has set up a divider between you and the church and in the word. And it didn't happen overnight. You listen to the serpent long enough, he'll get you separated. So now he's talking to Eve saying, Eve, did not the Lord tell you that if you ate, that ate of the fruit, of, of, of this tree that you would die you won't die watch this if you read the words you go on this, the listen and see that basically the statement was that you're not supposed to eat of every tree of the garden God didn't say that no every tree he just said that one tree so Satan is always divisive he's always trying to trick you and cunningly and, and so what happened was she decided hmm I trust you more than I trust God, serpent. So I'm going to eat because I want to be wise. And surely God made a mistake. Why, why would God allow me to keep being sick? Surely he made a mistake. So I'm going to eat from the tree. So she ate, but watch this. Nothing happened. You don't see any record of anything happening when Eve ate of the tree. Because she was not the direct person that God cut the covenant with. When God cuts covenant with you, it's between you and God. What anybody else do has no consequence in our covenant. When he cut a covenant with Abraham, what anybody else did had nothing to do with Abraham. So he cut covenant with Adam. Said, Adam, don't eat of this tree. Now Eve already ate of it. And now she bring it to Adam and tell Adam, look, the serpent told me if I eat, I would be wise. God said we would die. I'm not dead. So now, Adam, you have to face the reality. Is God a liar or is the devil a liar? I'm not dead. God said I would die. We get smarter than we think God is. See, God is saying the day you eat of the tree, you're going to die. But my spirit that's in you is going to die. Because there is no true life without the spirit of the Lord in you. None. There is no life. There are a lot of dead folk walking around, zombies, walking around, but they ain't got no life. Because life is only given in Christ. You become a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So Adam, 
now has to face the fact, do I eat of this? It cause problems. It, now Adam's thinking has messed up. When your thinking starts to go haywire, it happens because you have started meditating on the wrong thing. Your mind don't just, just go crazy overnight. Watch this. Whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. If you keep something in your mind long enough, you're going to do it. Or you're going to agree with it. So if I keep looking at, 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 at Gwendolyn, and I keep thinking about her when I go home, I'm going to eventually try to figure out how I can get with Gwendolyn. And in a process of time, Satan will make sure you get the chance. Because when you continue to keep something in your mind, your actions gravitate toward it. And so Satan will make sure that the arena is set. You ever notice how when you get saved, people that you wanted to date start trying to flirt with you? That ain't never happened to anybody? Me? Yeah. Now I've been, I've been after you and you didn't pay me no attention. As soon as I got saved, you call me, well, how you doing? Just talk to the check to see if you want to go to him. I've been trying to get you to take me to the movie for six years. Ever since we was in junior high school. Now here you come when you know I'm trying to get my life right. You don't mean me no good. But it happens that way. Why? Because you got to be tested. You got to go through. Do you really love the Lord? God says, show me. Lovest thou me, uh, Peter? Feed my sheep. In other words, if you love me, do what I commanded you to do. Say, you can't love me and do the wrong thing. Because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Watch this. Watch this. Let's get, let's get, get, get to the heart of the matter this morning. Omega thinking is thinking the way God created you to think. The Bible says that God, that call those things that are not as though they were. God don't wait for things to happen 